Today, we are right here with the one, <laughs> the only, Cross One. One, 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 one. one Give him the, the Ivan Echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up, Smurf? You good? What's up, Cross? We, we had we had fun. Yo, here, six uh, feet, six good, feet, COVID. Yeah, we had a, a good time last night, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, thank you, you for know? coming to the party, yeah. man. That was dope. <laughs> what is your first breaking memory? My first breaking memory? Yeah. Uh, seeing it you know, on my block. You know, like seeing it on TV, actually, like in, I don't know, say 83, 84, like, you know, breaking. I, I don't know specifically what it was, but I do remember going to the movie theater watching Beat Street and breaking. You know, what? What I mean? And like literally back then, like I tell people like breaking was super large. It was like a fad, you know, so like every kid in America tried to do it. You know what I mean? At one, po- at one point in time in the 80s, you know, so, um, you know, I did. I. I seen it. I wanted to do it. Everybody on my block was doing it, so and everybody when got was in. The first time you seen it and you recognized what it was, do you recall that? When I recognized what it was, was in the movie. Okay, so that's the first yeah, time yeah. you seen it, and you're like, "Oh shit!" Break I was in. like, oh, "Okay, there's a context to it. There's, it's breaking. It's hip hop." So you seen it prior you know? to that? Yeah, yeah, I seen it before. Okay, then, is it know? like I just don't remember exactly where exactly it was. Probably right. on the block, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. I said, man, like everybody was doing it, dude. Like it got, it was so big that like. My block was going walking across like to a couple blocks away to battle the other block. Yeah. Or we'd take our homies and go to the mall with our boom boxes and wait till we see somebody else, another crew with the boom boxes, and be like, What what's up? Like oh, let's battle. And we battle at the mall until we get kicked out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we go to the skating rink and you know, everybody's skating around in circles and people are in the middle battling, you know? Like that's what it was, you know, like it was everywhere and you know, we're everybody's kids, so like that's what it was. And then also like in eighty four, I was in judo. And I went to my first national championship, okay. uh, which was actually in Odessa, Texas. But there was there was kids from all around the U.S. So there's kids from New York, you know, Seattle, Florida, like everywhere, you know. Okay. And in the hotel lobby, they had like a little pre-party, like they just played music and stuff, and everybody was breaking. So it was what? like breaking across the USA, like all these kids was breaking. So it was fresh, dude. Even my sister used to break, and she's she doesn't. She doesn't do nothing like that, you know. Right. But she she did she did it back in the day too, you know. Like, where where did you grow up at? I grew up in San Diego. Okay, your whole yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Born and raised. Not well. I was born in San Diego. We like before I hit like first grade, I went to like uh, Guam, Japan, uh, Mississippi, and then came back to San Diego in first grade. Mississippi. Yeah, my dad's from Mississippi, so Whoa. like we did the country thing for a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. Is your dad yeah. white? Yeah. yeah. Dope, dope. Yeah. Was your mom? Your mom's Asian. My mom is Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, yeah, so. Is uh, is Asian a correct term for yeah. Japanese people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oriental Japanese, I guess. Because okay. you know? I heard Oriental Asian. was disrespectful. Really? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But um, I mean, I don't, I don't really call people like Oriental. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> weird. Know? That's weird. <laughs> that's a weird uh, terminology. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So you saw breaking in, in the eight, mid-80s. Yeah. And you saw it in the movie and you recognized it. Is that when is that when you told yourself, this is what I'm going to do? Or what happened? No. Nah, like I said, like... Um, I was I did it for like a year and a half, two years maybe tops, and everybody moved on. Like you know, everybody in my everybody in, that was in my crew, like they got in different gangs. Ooh, you know? wait, wait, like, wait, what crew? What, what was the name of that crew? Uh, exactly. It's funny because um, you know, uh, Little Rock's uh, the his event name is Rock City, but I was in Rock City Juniors. Ooh, because there Rock was a City there Juniors. was a Rock City, which is older guys, and then Rock City Juniors was like the kids of that. That Rock crew. City was a crew in San Diego. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dope. Yeah, Dope. So. Did they ever do anything or it was just a small local? Uh, no, but, you know, like when I talked to people, like they, they know they knew like that name, you know. So, um, you know, it wasn't like I was a big part of history or nothing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the junior crew and we just did our thing. And that's what just what I remember. And like I said, like after breaking was done, half the crews were me- like some of the crew was Mexican. They got in Mexican gangs like locally. And then, you know, the other half was like Filipinos and they got to get in the Filipino gangs, you know what I mean? And then this is, is what it is. Did you join the Mexican you know? gang or the Filipino gang? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I kicked it with Mexicans and, nope. and black dudes, you know, and, my, yeah. and, you know, but, you know, like I was, I, I want to say I had a strip, strict upbringing, but my, you know, I had both of my parents, you know, I wasn't in a, in a dis- dysfunctional family. So like, and even like my, my OG, my homie Vinny, um, he was like he was in a, he was in one of the gangs and I still kicked it with them, but and I was about to try to get jumped in and he was just like yo Chris you don't need to do that like you have a perfect perfectly fine family you could still kick it we got your back it's all good like you, you could chill so, you know and then like so, so like I, I I thank him too rest in peace to him but like you know yeah. like 
I mean, yeah, I, I went through like breaking with that dude, and then, and then just fucking around on the block, you know. And then eventually, I started uh, kicking it with like graffiti writers. Okay. Like writers, and then Did I. Did you start picking got, up graffiti? Uh, I, I I had messed around doing it, like doing art, like um, you know, because back in the day, like there was these uh, you know, like the break break dance, you know, album covers. So I was seeing all the block letters and all that stuff. So I started messing around doing that, doing the Playboy Bunny characters, you know, and then um, okay, wait, just wait, doodling, wait. you know what I mean? And then, and then like, like I said, I, I hung out with them, but like I was in a, I, my dad was like strict. So like I would just roll and they would go bombing. And it took me like maybe like two or three years before I finally just was like, screw this. I'm going to do this, you know? And I finally tagged on the wall and then I, I, I you know. How old yeah. were you? Uh, I'd say like ninth grade, eighth grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you you saw the movie. Some years went by. You start hanging out with the locals. You start getting into the graffiti. Yeah. Um, what was your graffiti name? Cross one. Cross one from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. The white cross. I just was doodling it, and then um, actually the the reason why it stuck. So I I I, I, I messed around. I messed around and wrote it. My boy was like, "Yo, that's a cool name." So he started writing it for like a month. And he was one of those dudes that's always changed his name. So I was like, man, I should have kept that name. That shit is cool, you know? And then uh, he stopped writing it, so I picked it back up. And then a couple of years later, uh, Criss Cross came out. Okay, dope. So my name is Chris. My real name is Chris. So everybody's calling me Criss Cross. And then eventually, like, everybody just started calling me Cross. Even my parents started calling me Cross. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. <laughs> that's just what it was, you know? Dope, dope. Yeah. So you got into the graffiti. You started writing a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. where, when did breaking come back into the scene for you? Ninety three. I, I know the exact date. It was like New Year's Eve, ninety two, ninety three. I went to this thing called K Rave uh, at Knott's Berry Farm. Okay. And they had like a rave side, and then they had a hip hop side with like DOS Effects and Black Sheep, and like. How old were you? Uh, I was a senior in high school. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, you know, like I still was doing windmills. I, I still knew how to do windmills and a couple like, you know, footwork stuff. And, and I knew how to break a little bit still because I was doing sports like judo and, and wrestling. So we would have soft mats. Yeah. So I would always, after practice, I would be like, look what I could do, you know, like, and I'll just show off, you know, how did you get windmills? Did somebody teach you? you I just, just, I just knew them from when I was a kid. Okay. So like, I just kept them, you know, you know, when you have a, like a cool little skill, like you want to show it off and that's, yeah. I just kept it, you know, and then Sick. breaking came back and I was like, what? I just jumped in the circle, started doing windmills, full work. And then some of my friends used to break with me back then that were there with me. And they were just like, yo, this is cool. Like, let's start practicing. I was like, yeah, let's do it. At that rave, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, but, but we were like on the rave side. Okay. And then like, it's funny because I had this, I uh, had another interview where we were talking about that and like, yeah. And then eventually like I went to a rave where it was like hip hop versus rave dancers. So like. I was in like a party crew, so it was kind of like ravers, you know. And then, and then we went against the, the hip hop b boys, and we got smoked, you know. Oh. It was crazy because it was crews that didn't even li they like they didn't even like each other, but they got together to battle the 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 the. Um, oh shit! The, Did the you recall the crews, name you know? of the crew? Uh, it was like Electric Shockers, Delivery Boys, like some of the better okay. crews in San Diego. Um, and then I ended up uh, linking up with some of the Delivery Boys, and that was my that was eventually my next crew, you know. So, that's crazy because yeah. um, my beginning was also going to raves and being yeah. in party crews, and yeah. that's a lot of the West Coast cats. That's that was in just the 90s. The, that was just our uh, upbringing, right? That's, yeah, that's what it was because that's that was the fun shit, you know. And um, so you guys got smoked by the by these <laughs> by the other b boy squad. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you guys go home and um, did you guys stick together with the group of guys that you were with? Did you guys create a crew after that? What so happened? so, I was in a crew called OSA. Okay, one step ahead. So. We were a, like a tagging crew slash party crew. So me and my homie Puck, we were the best b-boys in the crew. Like he had mad 90s, like we learned head spins together. Like he was my partner. So after that battle, I, I met the guys from Delivery Boys, my homie Donnie. And I was just like, yo, where you guys practice at? And he told me where he practices. And I, went, I met up with them and me and Puck eventually got down with, you know, Delivery Boys. And then, you know, from Delivery Boys, I, we got mad good. We Ended up kind of smoking a lot of the crews in San Diego, and then we ended up going to Radiotron and entering Radiotron, and you Ooh. know going to all those events, you know. And it was cool. It was cool, fun times, you know. <laughs> okay, well you're, you're, you're moving too fast for me. I'm gonna slow it down. <laughs> so you you're one step ahead, OSA. Yeah. You guys get together. You you get into Delivery Boys. Or you guys create Delivery Boys. We we got into Delivery Boys. You got there, into it was delivery already boys. a crew. Yeah. Okay, cool. it was already established. Older crew. heads. 
No, they were Same like age. they were probably a little bit younger than me, maybe a little like almost my age, but I was probably a little bit older than them. Yeah, and they were like the, 16, 17, I was 18, you know, like Okay. That's, that's those are the kind of years we're talking, you know. And was it the whole the boat the whole OSA crew that got into delivery boys or did you no, separate it was yourself? Just, it was the, well there was only like like I said, the two best B boys was me and Puck. Okay, okay. And we got we got in uh, delivery dope, boys. Dope. Yeah, yeah. Um what was your first battle that you said to yourself, like, yo, this is it? Besides the one you guys <laughs> got smoked in. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really a battle. Like the first time I, I went to B Boy Summit, okay. I was like, all right, this is this is fucking huge. You was know? that your first big event or No, nah, we like we were going to like so back in the day before the B Boy Summit, there was big I wouldn't even say there were battles. There were like dance you know, dance contests. So it'd be like party crews. It'd be like girl booty dancers, you know, like, uh, you know, house dancers, breaking crews. So they would all just battle. Like they would do shows and then, you know, they would be like pick a first place crew and a second place crew and a third place crew. So like, I think the best we ever did on that was maybe like took like third or second. We never really won anything, but yeah. you know, but we always made noise because our, you know, our intent was to like let everybody know what time it is. Like we're the B boys, like, you know, so, and that's just what it was. And then, and then eventually like there started becoming like B boy jams, you know, like Radiotron, B boy summit, even in San Diego, like, you know, DJ Saki, he's, he started, you know, throwing jams. And then, like, then there used to be this event called Secret Wars, you know. And and that's when I met, like, you know, Reveal and the Foot Soldiers and, you know, all those guys. And What year was this? Like, 95? Okay, so, mid I mean, dude, like, yeah, all this stuff happened, like, within, a, like, a two-year span. Okay. You know what I mean? It's crazy because, like, if I told you all the stories... It would seem like forever, but it was only like in a two year, three year span that all this stuff happened. It's like it all got crammed into like a couple of years, you know? Dope, dope. Yeah, so. Do you recall the first event or that you guys won? That we won? Uh, I think we won one of the Secret Wars. Dope. Yeah. Was it a crew yeah. battle or one? Um, it was a crew battle. Okay, five yeah. on five? Uh, no, like full crews. Okay. Yeah. Dope, yeah. dope. Yeah. What was the, wh when was the first time you actually threw an event and why, why what made you do that? Uh, well, Freestyle Session 1 was my first event. Okay. But I had helped the last Secret Wars. Okay. So Secret Wars were like maybe a couple of months before. And then I did Freestyle Session 1. It was actually supposed to be called The Session. Okay. But then there was a club called The Session. So I was like, all right, well, what's hi what people, what do people in, in hip hop do? Oh, we freestyle. So Freestyle Session, you know, so. And Secret Wars was a B-boy battle? Yeah, it was okay, a B-boy battle, yeah. So. Um, did you throw it? Um, originally intended to be a b boy battle. I didn't, I didn't throw it. This this dude sunk rock. Well, I'm talking about free, the session, yeah. freestyle session. Freestyle session. I did more on the level of like a hip hop event. Oh. So like there was an MC room where people were ciphering, you know, in one room. There was DJs scratching and everything, beat juggling. There was you know artwork like this, like was all over the event, you know. And then yeah, we we did like a, a top eight tournament for b boys, you know, and that was like the main attraction, you know. Yeah. So. So I was a b-boy, so like that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do a battle, you know. But I knew that we had to do other things to get more people to come, you know. And back then, like hip hop, it was just like way smaller. There wasn't as many things to do. We're not competing with like daytime events or whatever. So like, you know, if people knew that there was a jam, it was like a hip hop jam. Like, all right, let's go. This is gonna be fun, you know. Yeah. So. And was it always a? <laughs> that when it comes to throwing events uh, you're always losing money it's yeah, just not always not I mean, always there's, there's there's times where you there's times where you make money but like at the same time man some like sometimes you have to make money i mean if i'm gonna spend a whole year to throw an event i've got to make some money right you know and even if you make twelve thousand dollars in the grand scheme of things you made a thousand dollars for every month that you put into the jam damn that's that's really not that much yeah, yeah you yeah. know but you know it's it's all about you know, taking care of your time and, and making money elsewhere too, you know? So, cause sometimes, you know, I'll just do other stuff and bring that money into the B-Boy jam. And then hopefully like it comes back at least break even or something, you know, like how many yeah. freestyle session sessions have you thrown so far? A lot. Well, the main ones is like, I would say like 20 something, but you know, f since like 2004, We've been doing like qualifiers everywhere, so like you gotta figure like 
six to ten each year. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like it's been 24 years. So it gets up there. I'll probably, I'll probably, I'll venture to say probably like 200 and something. Shit. Yeah. Do you still enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. What is it about it that, that brings enjoyment? Seeing other people enjoy themselves, you know, oh. the, you know, I mean, I was even talking to my friend about it online today. I was like, man, you know, there's good and bad things about the scene, you know, but the good far outweigh the bad, you know? And like, that's why I said, I was like, yo, I, I, I went to the thing yesterday, your thing, and it was fun, and I seen the right people, because that's what I came, I came to see certain people, you know, and knowing that if I'm there, then, you know, they're, they'll remember, oh, shit, Freestyle says next month, you know, and that, I'm like the human flyer, right, so I don't really have <laughs> flyers with me, so, like, I'm the human flyer, like, yo, yo, you know Freestyle says next month, yeah, yeah, of course, like, you know, like, so, you know, I'm trying to do my due diligence and be at certain places and, 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 and just show face, you know, because, like, I mean, if you don't, how do you expect people to go to your shit, you know? True, if true. You're not, if you're not supporting other people in return, you know? Yeah. Like, do you still print out flyers? I did, but, like, this is, like, the first time we've actually haven't. So, like, that's why I was like, yo, I got to just go out and go to go to different places, you know? Like, because, you know, I'm kind of shook about it. But at the same time, I'm like, all right, whatever I didn't use in printing, I'm going to use on online promo. So, like, dope, you know, dope. doing Facebook ads and instagram ads or whatever you know what i mean house I mean, and i mean it's 2021 man that's just where it goes you know that's what it is now you know yeah <laughs> like what how do you feel that like between when you first started freestyle session and now the promotion aspect and your approach to throwing the event is it easier is it harder to get people to show up um well this year is a little bit different than years prior usually i'm just working all year around like going to different countries figuring out the winner they're in the bracket already. They're in the top 32 already. Like this year, we haven't done any qualifiers. I think we, there was only one, and that was one in Israel. So like they're coming. They're going to be like the only top 32 spot. So like 31 people are going to be selected in the prelims. Mm -hmm. You know, which and, and like so you know it's kind of like it's kind of like breaking without warming up. You know, usually all year I'm warming up to the to the big event, and then like, but now it's just kind of like all right, let's do it. You know, so. Um, you know, it's interesting. It'll, see, it'll be interesting to see how it goes, you know? Is this the first event since COVID? First big uh, freestyle session, yeah. Okay. Like, But we've done events. Like, we did um, a freestyle session solo battle in Florida. That's right, that's right. Yeah, we right. did it with Nat, and that was dope. Now, you know? was that a qualifier as well? That was a, quali that was a qualifier for the WDSF World Championship. Okay, what is, is that? Uh, it's like the World Championships for the sport breaking, basically. You okay, know? is that yeah. in the U.S.? No, no, it's going to be in France. Okay. And yeah. Is so that a, it, um, sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 it's all good. Is that um, connected to the Olympics? Sort of. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, whoever wins that is like, yeah, like that. That whole mix is like, it, it's it's like warming up to the Olympics. Yeah. So. Yeah. And how do you? I mean, just because you won that, you still got to win the, because there's going to be an Olympic qualifier. The and year, that's what the year of the Olympics. Was, yeah. The year of the Olympics, there's going to be an Olympic qualifier, official events leading to that. So anything happened prior is really has nothing to do with anything. I mean, other than getting your name out there to hopefully get funding or getting support from, you know, whatever association is going to be running the Olympics, you know, so which now is like kind of like unfolding now. Right. Is like break for gold USA. Right. So, um, you know, and they're helping USA dance, who's actually the, the, the you know, the group of people that are in charge of curating the the. Olympic experience for the USA B boys, you know. Mm. So, yeah. Are they gonna? They're obviously, they're gonna. Who, do you know who's gonna be involved in throwing the qualifier for the Olympics? Uh, no, but um, I'm almost feeling like we'll probably end up helping out a lot, you know. Yeah. So, um, it would only. It would only make I, sense. I guess, I guess you know, I don't know too much. I'm supposed to have a conference call with a bunch of guys, so I think it's gonna be break for gold, which are gonna be doing it on behalf of. You know USA uh, dance because there was USA breaking and USA dance. It's like mad confusing. I know right, everybody's right, right. like confused with stuff, but USA breaking is like the arm of WDSF worldwide, who's the you know the people that are in charge of the Olympics. Yeah. So you know it, it's it gets confusing, man. And, and like honestly, I I'm I kind of separate myself from it all, but I know at the end of the day, I know that it's a good thing for the scene. So we try we try to be 
encouraging and, and help as much as possible because we've been the scene. Like, I feel like Freestyle Session, UDEF, Pro Breaking Tour, we've been the scene for it, for however many years we've been around, you know right. what I mean? So even before UDEF and Pro Breaking Tour, Freestyle Session's been a big part of the scene. So, right. you know, why wouldn't we help, you know? So that's just the way I see it. <laughs> what was your favorite Freestyle Session? My favorite? I have a few favorites, like, okay. you know, three, five, eight, ten, and then 20. And are the, uh, yeah. those are the crew battles, right? Yeah, they're all crew battles. Okay. Yeah. Do you enjoy doing crew battles? Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, I enjoy being there, but <laughs> taking care of big, full crews is, is hard, you know? Like, you can't just, like, you know, with the, with the crew of three, you could put them in one hotel room, like a crew of 10. You got to get mad hotel rooms. It starts yeah. getting expensive. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, and that's why we kind of like broke off and did three on threes and stuff because it was just easier for our partners around the world to be able to get three B boys or three B girls or, you know, a crew over to the U.S. and put them up in a hotel and get the flights. Whereas if you do a crew, like you got to get mad sponsors, you know, and yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you know, with the Olympics coming in and stuff, like more sponsors get involved and, we could get these budgets where we can do cool stuff like that. You know, I'd like to do a freestyle session and just you know, like pay for the flights for like the top crews in the world and make sure that they're all here, you know, Ooh. like, and, that, and that's like one of my goals. Like my, one of my, a couple of my goals is to get all the best crews at freestyle session, which, you know, for the most part, I think we get a lot of, you know, the best. And then also we get a lot of surprises, right? A lot yeah. of names are, like like I, I came with the moniker where legends are born, you know, a lot of, like a lot of new legendary crews make their name at freestyle session. But one of my one of my goals is to eventually do the event for free, which we could do with sponsors and then also make sure that all the best crews are there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. What was <laughs> what was the worst freestyle session experience? The worst. Yeah. Uh, there was two. So. The worst on the grand scheme of things was when we did it on the boat. Oh, okay, okay. We saw eight. Okay, eight. I mean, yeah, like between between one. me and my partner, like we, me and my, my partner Polo, we we like turned it into kind of like a music festival, right? So we put like probably spent like three times more than we ever spent in our life, you know, on the event. Slick Rick was there. Yeah, Slick Rick, yeah. Big Daddy Kane. He brought out KRS One, like you know, Black Eyed Peas were supposed to perform. You know, Black Alicious was supposed to perform. Like man. Uh, Merce was there, like, you know, um, but yeah, like, dude, I almost lost all my money. And it was like in the hundred and something thousand dollar range. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> if I would have had to like refund everybody's money, I would still probably be paying it off right now. Like, you know, like that's how much money we would have lost. Wow. You know? But so luckily, luckily what? we, cause the, the city shut us down in the dome cause the don't, you know, the big dome cause they, they own half of that dome. But they just pulled they pulled our permits and everything, and then, um, but the half owner of the dome owned all of the the boat, so they're like, we have a we have a, actually a room in the boat. And I was like, all right, well, can I go see it real quick? So we went in there, and I, I literally like it was like a slow mo movie where I just walk in and it's like checkerboard floor, three three freaking levels, and I was just like, I was thinking in my head like. Why the fuck didn't I see this before? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was so focused on the dome that I never even even bothered to check. But like, dude, it was the ultimate venue. Like, and I was like, yo, let's get our, let's get, let's do it. You know? And he was like, let's do it. So and was this was a day of? Yeah. Like, shit. Nobody even knew people. We started bringing people in, and we had all the booths set up. So like, we had so many booths that it was kind of like you could spend an hour looking at all the booths. You know? So. I mean, yeah, and then we had a stage set up outside for the popping, so yeah, we spent like an hour setting all the equipment up, and then we got the music on, and then we just did it. Yeah. And I was gonna, I was, re almost, I was this close to like canceling the battle, oh, man. but everybody was like, "Yo, Cross, everybody's here to battle," and I was like, "All right, man, we'll do the battle." So like, we did the battle, and then it ended up being super legendary, you know? Yeah, like, that was legendary. Yeah, like I mean. You know, when, they, when people say, like, you know, pressure creates situations, you know, and you turn it into diamonds, dude, that was, that was a straight diamond, dude. So that yeah, was one up. of the worst but best. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. And yeah, then, and then, worse, and then, that just worse. And then, and then the, the other worst was, like, we drove all the way to Seattle, and the venue got canceled. Like, they literally, the event got canceled. 
your like freestyle session event. Yeah, fresh freestyle session in Seattle. Like one time we went to Seattle and it completely got canceled. All the, like the only thing that we could scrounge out of it is like a, we just did a party at my boys like you know closed down nightclub and everybody just was battling in the club. And it turned out to be cool, cool jam, but it wasn't the freestyle session that we were trying to do, you know? So, right, right. But, you know, we, we made it up and then some over there anyway, so it's all good. That's and, fresh, man. Yeah. Do you ever get tired of traveling? Um, honestly, uh, I didn't really think nothing of it. I was just doing, I was just going with the flow and I was just travel. And then, um, and then when COVID hit, like I literally was grounded for two years, right? No. And then like now I'm starting to travel again. Now I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tiring, <laughs> like yeah. you know, like even going like three hours away on the flight or five hours away. I'm like, dude, I'm tired. Like you know, I mean, I don't know if it's because I'm getting old or just I'm just not acclimated to it. So I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna probably get back on the horn and you know next year spend a little bit of time on the plane and and travel a little bit. But COVID hit, mm -hmm. and um, you were you were down for two years. Mm -hmm. How was that compared to the past? 10, 15, 20 years of you've been traveling consistently. How has it been? It was a different experience, you know, just staying home and actually, like, curating my schedule, you know, and doing certain things. But I I uh, kind of, like, locked down, like, local business, like, all my little side hustles that I would do. I was doing, like, delivery and renting cars out. And I, like, just kind of zoned in on that. And it's been doing good for me. So, you know, uh, it's cool, man. I, I caught up with bills and stuff, you know. Because really, like, when you travel, like, you know, the b-boy life when you when you're traveling and you're doing all these things you're probably not going to make as much money as you would if you just stayed home right. you know like for at least for me so staying home i actually did way better you know and and i realized like man like yeah i was kind of like in this rat race of of doing events and you know doing all these different things and just kind of doing too much you know so like i i think there's a happy medium now like you know it's it's and we're starting to get going again, so I have it in the back of my mind. Okay, I got to slow down a little bit. I don't have to go to every event. I don't have to be everywhere at once, you know? So just kind of pick and choose where I, I need to be, you know? So. Did you find out anything new about yourself during the COVID shutdown? <laughs> no, but I think my dad, rest in peace, like he passed away like a couple months ago. Sorry, um, yeah. yeah, he, um, thank you. Um, I kind of showed him my work ethic, but because like, you know, when he sees me at home or whatever, I'm just kind of in bed. I, I kind of work from bed, my, my bed, you know, I'm just like, J -j -j -j, you know, and he just see me on my computer all the time, which is work, you know, but he doesn't view it as work because I'm in my in bed, you know what I mean? So like, he's always like, get out of bed, get up, you gotta get out and do something, you know, like, so when I stayed home, you know, and I started doing like deliveries and working on the road and waking up in the morning and coming back later. He seen my work worth ethic in person, like in actual work, in actual, you know, physical work, physical labor. So um, I think I got more of his respect in that that, you know, sense, because he was bugging out. Like he was like, damn, I mean, I guess my son really does know how to work, you know, because, you know, all the hip hop stuff like he doesn't comprehend to like business and like you know events and hip-hop like he was like yeah when are you gonna get a real job you know and then like when he see that I, he's seen that i can actually really work <laughs> like <laughs> then he like falls back and then he sees all this stuff about the olympics and like my involvement in like the youth olympics and and just where i stand in the mix of what i'm doing like he kind of like scales back and he's just like wow okay he he really gets it in, you know, and and that's when like he kind of was like, OK, I'm not because, you know, my dad is like one of those guys. He worries about his kids, you know, and he's like, oh, my sister, she works for the county of L.A. And she's like, does you know, she makes good money. And he's just like, oh, she's good. She's going to take care of herself. We'll help her or whatever. But but Chris, man, I don't know, man. You know, he's got a little bit of debt. And, he, you know, I don't know if he could work. I don't know. You know, but he's seen my work. Like it. He's seen, you know. My, my debt's coming down because I'm, I'm just paying things off. And you know what I mean? Like, he, he got my re – I got his respect, you know. That's dope. And, and, and finally, I think he, he rested easy knowing that his son's, you know, is, 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 a, is, a, is a doer, you know, yeah. not, not just somebody that just, like, sits down and just does nothing, you know. Like, which I probably was a lot of that when I was younger, you know. So his, his vision of me – it's weird because I see videos of him now, like, in his last days where he – 
he's like this frail old man that barely could walk. But I didn't see that when I was when I was with him in those days. I seen the young, you know, right. 30 something, right. 40 year old man that was strong and could beat my ass. You know what I mean? And like, you know, he's like my hero. And then, you know, so like his vision of me, though, is that little kid that's laying in bed doing nothing. Right. So I may be in bed and on my computer doing a lot of things that he can't comprehend to. But all he's seeing is that the, the little kid that's doing nothing. So if I'm in my room, like, you know, so that's that's kind of like the thinking that I was thinking, like when I seen it and, and just being in the mix of it. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, yeah. What was their relationship with him when you were a youngster? When you first, like in your teens, high school, was he supportive of you going breaking and stuff like that? Well, or? my dad was in the military, so like, he, you know, he'd be gone three months at a time. Okay. So I was, I was really more close to my mom. And then, you know, my dad was around, you know. Um, so was your mom he was support. Oh, no, my mom would take me to judo practice, wrestling practice. Like, my mom was like, she's all about it, you know. And then my dad would just be like, you know, he'll pop up here and there. Like, we were, we were all tight, you know. Like, of course, we were, we were a tight-knit family. But, you know, like I said, he, he was in the military, so he was always working, you know. And it's crazy because my sister's the same way. So, like, she, she's always nonstop working, you know. And you, so. your sister's older than you. No, no, she's, well, she's younger than me, but she acts older than me. Okay. <laughs> and how, how many years younger is she? She's only like three years younger. Okay, so you guys yeah. are basically the same age. Yeah. Did you guys grow up together and go to the same schools and stuff like that? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, dope. Yeah, yeah. So. So what is um what is your sister into? What kind of stuff does she do? Is she a hip hopper oh, at all? Man, nah, she's not a hip hopper. <laughs> <laughs> man, she's just into her work, bro. Lit work and traveling sometimes, you know. Like Dope. she's in Hawaii right now. She goes she likes to go to Japan, you know, like she likes traveling. Her husband travels a lot, so she'll go wherever he's going sometimes, you know. But she's she's all about work, dude. Yeah. Has um your dad and your mom actually been to freestyle sessions from the beginning when did they start showing up or? nah my mom started coming like i want to say like well during during the first couple of years of freestyle session like 98 to about freestyle eight my, my parents and my sister lived in japan so they all moved to japan and i stayed and i stayed with the house and that's why like everybody knows the the house where i live in now still is like the b-boy house you know like Everybody used to live there, like the Rhythm Bugs, like a couple of Rock Force cats. Like a lot of people came through our spot, you know, people from France, Japan, Korea. Like, you know what I mean? Like everybody came to the pad and we had the garage, you know, pimped out to, to break. So everybody would break there. Um, and yeah, man, like they went to Japan and I was kind of just doing everything. And then eventually I did freestyle session in Japan. So that was actually my first time my dad actually went to one of my jams was in Japan. Oh, shit. And, uh, yeah, he kind of bugged out. He was just like, oh, okay, this is crazy. Like, there's a thousand people here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then when he, when they finally moved back was around Freestyle Session 8. So that's when my mom and my sister started doing the door. Oh. So most, of the, most people have seen my sister or my mom at the door, like, you know, taking the money or grabbing the tickets or whatever. Like, because, like, me and, me and my partner Polo, our thinking is, like, as far as cash, it has to be family that's taking that cash. You know, like we, we, don't, we don't want to, like, trust. We don't really trust right, anybody. Right, you know, right, right, right. So, yeah, so, you know. And so, yeah, my family's been doing that ever since. And my dad would come and pop in once in a while. The last one he came to was the last one that I did in San Diego because it was at the casino that he frequents. <laughs> <laughs> so he just popped in, went to the casino, did his thing. But it's funny, too, man. There was people, like, randomly, he's just, like, you know, talk to random people just on the whim, and they're just like, "Who's this? Who's this old man trying to talk to me?" You know, like I met some dude, and he was like, my dad like shared some food with the guy, and and then at the end of their con, they had like a little conversation, and at the end of the conversation, the guy was like, "Hey man, what are you doing here?" Like he was, like, "Oh, I don't want you thinking I'm some like crazy old man." Like my my son is doing the event. He's like, "Well, your your son is cross one." He's like, "Yeah, that's my son." He's like, "Oh, <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's crazy, you know." So like, <laughs> I'll be hearing random stories like that. But my dad, like, yeah, he was crazy, man. Shout he, out to your dad, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, what so, did he do for a living? Well, like I said, he was in the navy, and then oh, that's he, right, he that's eventually right. he eventually was an engineer. Engineer. He was like a systems engineer, and he like uh, worked on battleships and like the the logistic, you know, the battle weapons and stuff like that. Like I'm, you know, it's far beyond my. Right, my right, comprehension right. of what he was doing yeah stuff. like but he was he was so high up there he was like the guy sitting back and just like telling people what to do you know right. what I mean? <laughs> so 
Yeah. How did um the relationship between you and Polo start? Uh, I actually met Polo um, uh, at a Far Side show in LA, promoting Freestyle Session two year anniversary. So the freestyle second session, freestyle, freestyle, freestyle session? session five. No, Freestyle Session five. Freestyle Session five. Yeah. So I had already I had did the fifth one was the two two year anniversary. So, I'm sorry. So who's that? Oh yeah. yeah. So sorry. So, sorry, so, sorry. so yeah. So I, I met Polo. Uh, Promoting Freestyle Session 5, which is a two-year anniversary at, at a club in L.A., at like the Key Club, promoting it outside of a, a Far Side show. So I gave him a flyer, and he's like, looks, he grabs the flyer, he's like looking at it, he's like, who do you work for? And I was like, Pfft. so like, I'll just kind of give it back to him, like, yo, I work for myself, fool. And he's like, what? You cross one? I was like, yeah. He's like, you know G-Wiz? I was like, yeah, G-Wiz my boy. He's like, oh, what up, man? Like, you know, because we were supposed to meet each other, like I had always heard about him. He's like, yo, I'm Polo. I was like, oh, word, because he, he did this event called Cypher or Circles, uh, which was like for um, like freestyle dancers, you know. So as soon as we met each other, like we had, it's like we had known each other forever already. He grabbed a stack of flyers from me. He's like, let me help you. So he grabbed the stack of flyers. He was giving them out. And then once we were done, he was like, let's go inside. I'm on the list. So he gets he gets us in. We go to the top floor. We just we just grab a few drinks and chop it up. You know, he's like, hey, what, what's up, man? You excited for the event? And I'm like, yeah, man, like. First time doing it in L.A., you know, he's like, yo, if you need anything in L.A., here's my card. You know, like, if you need anything, like, don't hesitate to hit me up. So, like, literally, like, that was, like, three months before the event, if it happened. Whoa. So, like, two, like, a week before the event, I had lost my venue because I was working with, like, this other crew. And they just dropped the ball, like, lost the venue. I don't know what happened, man, but, you know, and not not, not their fault or anything, but whatever. One thing leads to another I'm calling Polo. What up, Cross? Like, you were excited for the event? Like, yeah, man, but uh, I lost my venue, bro. He's like, what? Come to LA tomorrow. I got you. So, like, I went to LA the next day. We went to the, this venue. It was the Pasadena Church. We, we dropped a deposit, like, right that day. And the rest is history, man. He helped me do the event. It was me and him. And then even the, the crew that was supposed to help, this Foundation Fund Collective, they... They helped too, and it was a successful event because we didn't tell anybody where the event was going to be. It was like back in the days you had to call on the day of to get the location of the event. Right, so right. nobody even knew all this stuff was going on. But it was, in, in my mind, I was like, yo, this shit is going haywire. It was like, this shit is going to be crazy, crazy, you know? So we, um, like I said, the event was successful. And at the end of the event, I just told Polo, I was like, yo, man, like, I really liked how everything went. And if you, if you want to keep doing it with me, let's do it. You know, and he was like, let's do it, man. Like, I'm with it, you know. And and if nobody knows, Polo is like actually Black Eyed Peas manager at the time and still is. But, yeah, I was on the journey with them, too, like as far as them blowing up and becoming commercial superstars, you know, worldwide superstars. So, like, Freestyle Session grew, Black Eyed Peas camp grew, and we grew as people, and, and we're still here 24 years later, you know what I'm man, saying? So, like, yeah, man, congratulations, yeah, man. That's dope. Right. Um, what do you mm -hmm. think about, I know that people online are talking about events, especially going towards the Olympics, mm -hmm. drug testing. Mm -hmm. What Do you feel like b-boys are actually taking drug enhancements or anything like that uh, at the moment? I'd be, I mean, you'd be stupid to think that people aren't. I think people are. I don't think it's to the extent what people think, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, when people drug test, like, so... So drug testing is straight up strictly for the sport aspect of breaking. Right, right, right. As far as the scene is concerned, we nobody's ever gonna nobody a nobody has the money to do it, and it's just not. It's not really like we don't need to do all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it gets to the point where, you know, you feel like people are are really cheating like that, then it's like you know we'll see. But you know, can you give me an example? Because when I think of drug like b boys taking a drug, I. I like what kind of drug? Well, well, well the thing, well, well, the thing is, like, there's, there's supplements. What is he? What's up with this dude right here? Sorry to uh, cut you off, man. No, no, it's all good. Um, yeah, it's just the sport aspect of breaking that is doing all that, you know, like, and, and like I said, like, honestly, like, there's a lot of things that are blacklisted from, like, as far as being considered a drug, that you wouldn't think. Okay. You know, there's certain medications. There's uh, certain, you know, like, you know, like creatines and all that stuff. Like, there's some, there's some like supplements that people take that are on that list. Oh shit! So you might not think that you're taking anything crazy, 
but it may be on that list and you may fail that test. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? So, like, you really have to, like, read on that test. And, you know, like, that's not really nothing I'm, like, worried about. Right, right. A, I don't do any supplements like that. <laughs> I'll take my fish oil and my vitamin B or C or whatever, you know. But, like, yeah, like, it, it's no big deal to me. But, um, you know, active B-boys, I know some do take supplements. So, you have to kind of check, you know, the oh, list. You okay. know, it's not really about weed and right right you know right. hard drugs or anything like that or steroids you know but who knows you yeah, know maybe yeah. you know like if that's going to give you the edge because you know i i think as far as steroids is concerned it's not really the fact that it makes you any better but it makes you work out like crazy you okay, know and, and then you if you're working out that much more you're gonna, of course you're gonna get more built you're gonna get more stamina you're gonna you're gonna see the effects of it you know so i mean who knows though we'll see you know do you think that in breaking, having muscles is a pro or a con? <laughs> I mean, if you have too much muscle, it could be a con, you know, but you definitely have to have strength. Right. You know what I mean? So, and there's no perfect anything, you know. I've seen, I've seen super muscular b-boys do, you know, crazy stuff. I've seen people that have no muscles be strong as hell. Like, you know, probably the strongest b-boy in the world is probably Cujo. And he doesn't look like a bodybuilder, but that dude could lift some shit. You know, he could lift a car if he wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Right. But he's strong as hell, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, um, how you look doesn't matter, you know, but you definitely want to have strength. You want, uh, We're in an age now where it's like a, it's a sport. So, you know, your stamina matters. If you ain't got stamina, you know what? You're going to get wasted. Right. You know, by the, if, if you can't even – if you're spent after one, two rounds, dude, and, you know, the tournament, you, you have to have, like, 20, 30 rounds in your arsenal, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna get burnt out, and you're not gonna be as as crisp in round you know 13 as you were in round one. You right. know, no matter how fresh you are, you right. know, like you you could look all dipped out, fresh, head to toe, like looking super fresh, and then all of a sudden your 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 things out, you're sweating, you're like half like turned aside, you're just like oh like you look crazy, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just uh yeah man, you got you. you it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, but you know, some, some events too, you know, like we've been to events where some of the, the battles are one round, you know, so True. you got to have that aspect too. True. So you got to be well-rounded, you know? True. Yeah. So. True. Yeah. Um, where's freestyle session going now? So, uh, where's it going? Um, you know, I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing. Like I said, I want to eventually get sponsors to where I could offer more cash prizes. I like to be able to fly more crews out. I'd like to eventually do it for free. You know, um, yeah, and, and all that's going to be facilitated through, you know, UDEF, which is our nonprofit, and Pro Breaking Tour, which is our tour, you know, and hopefully we could bring more, you know, capital into the scene and, and disperse it out into, like, more events, you know? Yeah. I mean, we work with the core events right now, but, you know, hopefully we could grow, you know, and do more, you know? We, we did do a lot in the beginning when Steve was around, when Silverback was around, and he's still around, um, you know, low-key, but, you know, it, it was huge. Like we had like 40, 40 battles at one point, but in my mind it was like less is more, you know? So we broke it down to like eight to 10 the last couple of years. And I think it's been doing fine because it's more, you're able to follow eight to 10 events in the course of a year. You could build up the hype of an event. You, right, could, right. you could promote it after the fact, show the battles, let it breathe a little bit between battles. You know what I mean? Like you don't want too much going on. You know what I'm saying? So, What's a breaking pet peeve? Breaking pet peeve? Yeah. Uh, just all the hate, man. Like you know, like I feel like I feel like the scene could be much more better if uh, you're just more like more good spirited. Like if, if 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 you just spend your whole day on Instagram and, and YouTube just talking shit about everybody that you see, oh this guy bit this or I seen this and, and 90% <laughs> of the time, the people that they say are, bi we're biting somebody else. So right. it's like, you don't even know the story and you're talking like, shut the hell up. You know? So like, I don't know. I just feel like the toxic, the, the toxicity of scene could like chill out, you know, like, you know, it's, it's competitive. Like let it be competitive in the cypher, but you know what? Afterwards, pat your homie on the back, pat somebody, even if, it, if, if somebody's on a competitive level with you, like, Give them their props, dude. Like, you know, like, like give, give people a reason to like do their thing and show out. Like, you know, don't like down, down people to the point where they want to leave the scene. You got people that leave, go to like choreography 
and blow up in the choreo scene. You know what I mean? And then, then they really have something to hate about. Like, oh, right, shit, right. Dude, he got a million followers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, dude, like, chill. Like, you know, like, we got to be more. I feel like in the 90s, like, it was more camaraderie. You know, like, if you look, watch Radiotron, somebody go out, even if they fucking smack their, like, ankle at the end of their power move around, everybody's like, woo, you know, like, they, they give the A for the effort, you know, like, I feel like the, the whole no easy props, you know, like, nobody wants to give easy props, like, dude, like, nah, give props, dude, give props where they're due, man, like, especially when you see these kids out here busting their ass trying to do these moves, like, give them the dap, like, yo, keep it up, man, you know, I try to... I try to give all the people, like, all the youngsters that are doing their thing, like, dude, people, there's kids that are doing, like, crazy stuff now. Like, yeah, they you know? Are. And even in the U.S., like, there's mad, like, youngsters that are just coming up quick. And when and if I haven't never seen them, but I've seen them on video and I've seen them in person, I just, like, I, I, I like to shake their hand, like, yo, you're dope, dude. Like, keep it up, you know? Like, I'm, I'm a like fan. Day. I'm a fan, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, then, like, dude. A, a, a little a little bit of acknowledgement goes a long way you know what i'm saying and and that's all i could that's that, i mean I know, I know there's a lot to say but like that's a good message yeah I, that's I, a good I, message. you know it would just be better like you know you know i don't know man yeah i don't i don't like to like talk about the bad shit you know right, but right. like that's just that shit just needs to go man you know <laughs> top three favorite b-boys in the last five years in the last five years yeah <laughs> new cats you can do top three. You don't have to do five. Five is a lot. See, well, you know, favorite and who I think is, like, com competitively dope, you know, and people oh, yes. that are, like, dope, dope. Like, <laughs> I say dope, dope. Like, but, you know, the dopest cat, like, that I think style-wise may not fare well in a tournament. True. You know, so um, as far as, like, competition B-Boys, like, I'm really impressed by what Shige Kicks has been doing, you know. Like, Issei to me was really dope, but then Shige Kicks, like, kind of took that torch and just – like kind of ran with it, you know, um, Victor keeps on impressing me. You know what I mean? I feel like there's more things that he can do, like as far as his presence, because, you know, a lot of times he has his head down and like, you know, but like the shit that he does is just phenomenal, Amazing. you know, and his stamina is like all day. Um, Zeku, he, he impresses me not, not only on the floor, but off the floor. Like he carries himself like, like, like an OG damn near, you know, like the, the stuff that he's spinning and the things that are, he's doing with the students. Yeah. Nobody else is doing like, you know, there's a lot of other people, you know, like gravity Moy, and they're all kind of like affiliated. Like they're all doing phenomenal things. You know what I mean? Like they're taking things to the next level, which is, it's supposed to happen. Like I took my, I took what I, what I've been blessed to be able to be good at, which, which was, uh, you know, curating things, you know, connecting the dots and just helping things along. I, I took what I, what I can do. I wouldn't say as high as I could take it. Cause I'm sure there's more that I could take it, but I've taken it pretty high. And I just feel like these guys, their bar that they started at is a little bit higher. And then now they're going to take it higher, you know, yeah. eventually, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and there's people like that all around the world. Like Katsu's doing his thing in Japan. You know what I mean? Like in, in Europe in in Russia, like those guys are doing a phenomenal job. You know, the IBE guys are doing crazy stuff. Like, you know, everybody's stepping up to the plate. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, I think when it eventually is in the Olympics, I think that um, I think it's going to blow people away. I think it's going to be the talk of the, the Olympics, you know. And I think I think when they see and they get introduced to our culture, there's not going to be no turning back, dude. They're going to be hooked. You know what I'm saying? Like. I, I just think I think I think in the whole Olympic sphere, like all the athletes are gonna want to come watch the B boys. That's fresh. because they know how how dope it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they don't even know. They a lot of them have never seen a B boy jam or a B boy battle. So like they're gonna be intrigued and they're gonna be like, you know what? Hopefully breaking's not during my finals. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Hopefully it's on a different day and I could go check it out because I think it's gonna be packed. Like that's kind of like what happened in the in the youth Olympics. Like all. The breaking was the biggest thing because it was new. Nobody's seen it before. And everybody was just curious, like, oh, how's it, how's it going to be? You know, and that's, that's probably how it's going to be in France, you know. So I'm excited, man. It's a really good time to be in the scene, you know. Very exciting, yeah. man. Very yeah. exciting. If you were to pick one country that's dominating and breaking, what country would that be? <laughs> dominating and breaking? Um, i say there's probably two that are – and I don't know if they're do necessarily dominating, but they probably will be in the next few years. Like Russia and Japan, 
Like their kids are next level, dude. Yeah, I'm man. I'm really looking forward to like a jam that puts the best from Japan and best from Russia in a room and just let them go at it and we'll like people's minds will be blown. You know what I'm saying? Man, <laughs> like that's gonna be fresh. Yeah. So I mean, even I mean, even the crews, the top crews in Japan, the top crews in Russia right now, like yeah, they they they're all, a lot on top. You know, um, you know, Jinjo in Korea, they're like one of the better crews. And they're doing dope stuff in Korea, but I don't really see like a new young scene coming up in Korea, you know? Oh, like I do in Japan and, and, and Russia. That's like, true. That's yeah, true. Like, you see a lot of kids in yeah, Russia and Japan. I do. Like these guys are like spinning on their elbows and their ears and doing crazy <laughs> stuff, dude. I'm just like, bro, like, yeah. Good thing I'm not a kid and I got to compete yeah, with that. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I would hate to try to compete with that. <laughs> Man. Yo, Cross. Man, thank you for coming, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me, I really appreciate yeah. you coming last night, too. That yeah. was really dope. That was really Word dope. Up. Nah, Is think... there anything else you want to let everybody know? Uh, no, nah, just uh, Freestyle Session, uh, November 13th and 14th. You can follow us online at FSS Worldwide. Um, you can see a lot of the video stuff from, from the events at, on Stance, you know, Stance Elements. Um, and, yeah, man, represent with Smurf over here, you know. I love that you 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 started your own thing and you continue to keep working and 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 fueling your your hunger to like learn more right because like doing these things is not easy like not get, getting the proper mic and the proper cameras and doing it by yourself like that that takes work and time and I know that you know like you said like it's hard to get people to donate or anything like but you know hard work pays off in the end you know like and I feel like you know sooner or later somebody's gonna be like yo come do it here. We got a budget for you. And, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be things like that. You know, there's so many jobs out there that need to be filled. And I think I see a lot of people filling them to, to just feel their soul. Right. Cause you do it cause you love it. Right. Yeah. And you want, you want to bring this side of the scene out. Right. And, and I see more people doing that, like whether it be like, you know, medical stuff or, or, you know, you know, camps and, workshops and whatever you know if there's if there's a void to be filled fill it man like you know it doesn't always have to necessarily be make dollars and cents but you know eventually it, it's gonna come around you know what i'm saying so yeah thank you for doing what you do brother thank you for being yeah, here man yeah. <laughs> right peace y'all make sure you like the video and subscribe cross one in the yeah. building peace, peace.